Hello everybody, my name is Dr. Ram Mohan Shri Padbhat. I'm a consultant nephrologist at Narayan Hrudhyalaya, Bangalore. On the occasion of World Kidney Day 2022, we are having this special session to discuss a few important issues that you might want to know with regards to nephrology. We celebrate the second Thursday of every March as World Kidney Day to try and raise awareness about kidney disease in general population. This has been an initiative since 2006 by International Society of Nephrology. So we are very glad to be having this session and I wish you all a very happy World Kidney Day. With me, I have got Dr. Neelam, who is one of our kidney specialists. She has asked people around as to what they would be interested to know with regards to their kidneys. And one of the things people told they want to know is about frothy urine. So she has collected some questions that the general public might want to know about frothy urine and she would like to ask that to me and I'll try my level best to answer these questions. Off you go Neelam. Thank you sir. Uh, my first question I would like to ask you sir as hmm. we see many patients in our clinic they come with complaint of frothy urine, bubbling of urine. Hmm. So what do you mean by this uh, frothy urine? Uh, what are other symptoms also they may get uh, to hmm. uh, Mm. can say the patient has got the kidney issue. Yeah. So when, when we pass urine, you might notice that there will be some bubbles in it. That is not something to worry about. When there is a lot of bubbles and they don't settle down, even after you know the urine st staying there for some time, they don't settle down. That is when you could call it as something which is significant. Now, having said that, you know, not everybody who's got frothy urine might be having a problem with their kidney that we need to worry about. Yes. Just pa passing the urine in, in a forceful way, the, when the urine comes out uh, uh, at, at high speed, that itself can cause a lot of frothiness, which might stay there for some time. So we don't have to worry about that. There are lots of reasons why, you know, physiologically people can be having frothiness of the urine. So essentially, just a few bubbles is nothing to worry. Lot of bubbles causing frothiness is something that we call as frothy urine. And not all frothy urine need to have a pathological reason for it. Okay. So as you say, sir, very few patients will uh, with uh, frothy urine will have the kidney problem. So when they should consult a doctor or they should wait for some time? Hmm. So once or twice, if you have noticed frothiness in the urine, I don't think you should worry about it. If it is there consistently all the time for a few days, then I don't think you should neglect that. However, if you have got frothiness of the urine along with any other problem as well, like, you know, uh, what I would like to say here is, you know, one of the reasons why people could be having frothy urine is urinary tract infection. So urinary tract infection, people might not be having only frothiness of the urine. They might also be having burning sensation when passing urine. They might be experiencing fever, chills, nausea. That is a sensation as if they are going to vomit. All these things might be there. So if, if they've got any of these associated symptoms, I don't think they should wait for more than a couple of days. However, if they don't have any of these things, they can probably wait for a few days and watch it before they consult their doctor. As I said, one of the most common reasons why there will be frothiness of the urine is the speed of the urine. One of the other reasons could be when we clean the toilet, we use a lot of chemicals which have got soapiness to them. And when we pass urine into that, there will always be froth. So that is something that we should, uh, you know, uh, uh, try to differentiate. Yeah. So if, if you're passing urine, uh, into a sterile container and still you're having frothiness, then that will be significant. I also want to know, sir, is it related to some lifestyle pattern also? Frothy urine, mm. eating in the urine? Of course, of course. A lot of people exercise very heavily. All of us are allowed to pass some amount of protein in the urine, which is what causes the frothiness many a times. So some people, they exercise very heavily. When they exercise very heavily, there will be muscle injury and protein breakdown and release into the blood. That will be passed in the urine. So when the protein content in the urine goes up, that leads to frothiness. Okay. So people find that after they've had 
uh, workout, a very tiresome workout, when they pass urine, they might have frothiness in the urine. One more reason could be the concentration of the urine. If somebody has not had enough water to drink and the urine is very concentrated, that can cause foaminess of the urine as well. One more thing, you know, excessive protein intake, you know, that is one of the least reasons why somebody can have proteinuria. Meat. Meat, yeah. Excessive protein intake. It could be vegetable or, you know, non-vegetable protein, um, animal protein. That can lead to a protein leak in the urine, enough to cause frothiness in the urine. So, if we see the patient, uh, 10 people with having the protein leak in the urine, uh, what will be the most common cause of the kidney related issue, sir? So, if, if you ask me, people who are coming to us, you know, so they, they, they would have been having this for quite some time, which is why alarm bells ring and then that is why they go to the GP and then the GP will do some tests and find that there is some problem and he, uh, the GP will refer the patient to us. The most common reason why people could be having frothiness in the urine could be urinary tract infection, but these people don't get referred to us. They're usually treated by the GP or whichever doctor they go and see. It could be a gynecologist or any other doctor they go and see. But of the people who come to see us, most often this sustained frothiness in the urine is usually due to protein leak in the urine. And the, the reason for protein leak in the urine usually is long-standing uncontrolled diabetes or high blood pressure, that is hypertension. Most of the times, 50% or more of people will have these two conditions. Then there are another subset of people who might be having a problem with the small filters in the kidney. Our kidneys have got about 10 lakh filters in each of them, so together about 20 lakh filters. And these filters are very minute, they are microscopic and they are called glomeruli. And if there is any injury to the glomeruli, that can make it leaky and it can leak protein so much so that when they pass urine, it causes frothiness. frothiness. Yeah. And as I said, one of the most common or couple of most common reasons are hypertension, diabetes and then any injury to the glomeruli. Uh, so, sir, if someone is diagnosed with proteinuria with some uh, kidney disease finally, then uh, how do you work up further and manage the conditions? Hmm. So, we usually try to see, uh, the one of the simplest things we do is to look at urine routine. So, we see how much of, uh, you know, protein is there, which is semi-quantitative, 1 plus, 2 plus, 3 plus, whether there's any associated blood at all in it, whether there is anything to suggest infection, white cells, bacilli, nitrite and things of like that. We look at all those things. Then we do a blood test to look for the kidney function. We do something called as creatinine in the blood, which tells us about the kidney function. Then we do a scan of the kidney to look at how the kidneys look, whether there's any abnormality that we can see on the ultrasound. These are tests that we do apart from taking a detailed history and doing a physical examination to look at their blood pressure. Yeah, And anybody who's got history of diabetes will have to look at the diabetic control. Those who don't have history of diabetes, we have to look for diabetes as well. So a fasting sugar, glycated hemoglobin, these are all additional tests that we do to look at uh, the, the protein leak in the patient. Subsequently, if it is ascertained that there's no urinary tract infection and the frothiness is because of the protein leak in the urine, we do more tests like 24 hour collection of the urine to look for protein or something called as a urine protein creatinine ratio. All these things we ask the person to do. That gives us an information as to how much of protein that person is leaking in the urine. That has got an, uh, uh, in a bearing on how we take it forwards. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for yeah. the beautiful Just one lesson. more thing I want to tell, you know, very few of these people who come to us and have got protein leak, we might want to do a biopsy. biopsy not not a yeah. major part, very small subset. Because most often they're not with our history, examination, tests. We have fair idea as to what it is because of. Usually, as I said, it's because of blood pressure and diabetes. And a small subset might be because of a glomerular disease, that is disease in the filter. And not everybody who's got this protein leak because of possible glomerular disease uh, or problem in the kidney, which is not related to diabetes and hypertension, do we end up doing the biopsy. If the protein leak is very minimal, the blood pressure is under control, 
there, there is no uh, blood uh, in the urine, mm -hmm. then we might opt to just wait and watch as well. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir, for the beautiful explanation. Hope it clears uh, all yeah. your summer doubts. Sir. Thank you so much. So just to recap, so frothiness in the urine be could be because of multiple things. And most common reason could be physiological um, uh, because of concentrated urine or excessive exercise. Um, and then uh, the next most common thing could be a urinary tract infection. Very few people might be having frothiness because of protein leak. And in them, it is usually because of diabetes, blood pressure. So control your diabetes and blood pressure. Thank you very much.